sun. Once upon a time, long ago, there lived a lumberjack with his children by the edge of a faraway forest. The son was named Hansel, and the daughter was named Gretel. The lumberjack's wife, the children's mother, had died, so they were going through very hard times. As they were also a very poor family, they survived only on the herbs and fruits that they collected from the forest. The children never complained about the situation and always tried to support their father. One day there was a knock on the door, and a woman holding a huge bottle of milk appeared before them. I've come from the neighbour forest. My house burned down, and I have no place to stay. I've also brought a cow with me. If I give you this bottle of milk and the cow, could I stay with you? The father and children happily accepted this offer. At least they were now going to have a cow that could give them milk every day. After some time, their father married this woman. Yet their impoverished life continued. One night, as the children went to bed, husband and wife started arguing. But Hansel was secretly listening to them. Look at us. How can we feed the kids like this? I'm helpless. I don't know what else to do. Well, I actually have an idea that could benefit us all, but I don't know if you'd accept. Tomorrow, let's take the kids to the forest and tell them that we're going to collect wood and we'll light a fire. Give each of them a loaf of bread and leave them there. Don't be ridiculous. I love my children. How could I abandon them? Don't worry. They're a lot older now. They can take care of themselves. When our situation gets better, we'll search for them. If not, all four of us will starve to death. Hansel was a very smart child, so when he heard his stepmother's plans, he secretly left the house to collect pebbles. His mother, that had passed away, taught him this. She had told him that the shining pebbles at night will show you the way. In the morning, their stepmother woke the children up. Hansel, Gretel, wake up! We're going to the forest. We need to collect wood for fire. The first thing Hansel did when he woke up was to put the pebble stones in his pocket. As they walked to the forest, he secretly dropped the pebble stones to the ground. They headed all the way into the depths of the forest. When they stopped to rest, their stepmother and father lit a fire, put some bread next to them, and started to walk away. Children. You rest a little by the fire. Me and your father will collect some wood and come back. Their father was very sad, but helplessly he followed his wife towards the path home. Realizing that their stepmother and father would not be coming back, the tired children fell asleep by the fire. When they woke up, it was very late and the moon was glowing brightly. I'm so scared, brother. What are we gonna do? I don't think anyone's coming to find us. Don't be scared, Gretel. The pebble stones I left in the moonlight shine brightly. We can follow them and go back home. The children walked all night long, and finally they arrived at their father's home. The pebble stones had shown them the way. Their stepmother, that opened the door, stared in surprise. What were you doing in the forest till this hour? We looked all over for you and couldn't find you. I bet you were being mischievous and hiding somewhere, weren't you? Thus, pretending and fooling the kids. The father happily hugged his children. Thank heavens you've come back. My eyes are swollen from crying all night. But their stepmother wasn't giving up easily. Her only goal was to get rid of the children. She asked them how they had found their way back home, and Gretel told her everything one by one. Now that she knew how they came back home, she locked them in their room that night. That night, Hansel couldn't go out to collect pebble stones. 
The next day, they went to the forest again. This time, since Hansel didn't have pebble stones, while he was walking, he was dropping the breadcrumbs in his pocket onto the ground. The same thing happened, and the children waited by the fire once again. I'm so scared, Hansel. It's very dark again. Let's go back home. Don't worry. I couldn't collect pebble stones, but this time we'll follow the breadcrumbs that I dropped. But when they set off, there were no breadcrumbs. Because the birds had eaten all of them. But, but where's all the bread? They went in and out everywhere, but they couldn't find the way. No way! What are we going to do now, Hansel? Think of something, and I'm so cold. Okay, Gretel, don't worry. First, let's find somewhere to warm up. One way or another, we'll find the way back home. Both completely frightened and exhausted, they found a hollow tree and got inside to warm up. They fell asleep hugging one another. In the morning, they kept walking around the forest, not knowing where to go. Two days passed by. Whichever way the kids went, they just couldn't find the way. Later, they saw a bird on a tree branch. Oh, look! What a beautiful bird! It's as if it wants to say something to us. Do you think it'll show us the right way? Let's follow it! It was a big, magnificent blue bird. The children, forgetting how tired they were, started following the bird. They saw that the bird had landed on the windowsill of a house. Wow! What a beautiful house! It's as if the bird is calling us to come. Come on! What are we waiting for? Let's go! We might find something to eat! When they approached the house, they were completely baffled. It was a beautiful house made entirely of chocolate, cake and candy. The windows were made out of cream and the roof was covered in colourful candies. They started biting away at the house and tearing pieces off. I'm going to tear off a little from the window side, Gretel. Mmm, delicious! I'm curious about the candies hanging from the roof. You should taste the doorbell too. This way, they filled their bellies with cake, sweets, cream and chocolate. Hey, anyone there? Yoo-hoo, we're here. Helplessly, they decided to sit and wait by the door. A little while later, a sweet-faced, lovely woman holding a bag walked into the garden. Oh, it seems I have guests. Welcome! My bluebird gave me the news a few minutes ago, so I came as fast as I could. We're sorry. We've eaten a few things from your house without permission, but me and my sister have been really hungry for two days. It's okay. My house is very special. The parts you have eaten grow back right away. Come on, go inside. You must be cold. Also, if you don't have a home, you can stay with me. That night, she had them sleep in wonderful beds. And the next day, she prepared a delicious breakfast. Actually, this beautiful woman was an evil witch with treacherous plans. When she went to wake up the kids, Hansel and Gretel, who saw a horrifying witch in front of them, were screaming and wanted to escape from the room. But the witch captured Hansel and threw him in a cage and locked the door. She then threw Gretel into the kitchen. Ha 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 ha! You stupid kids! You fell for my house made of candy! Go on then! Cook the meals that you and your brother like! Get fat, so I can feel my belly more when I eat you. Go on and get started. Since both children were incredibly clever, in order to not get fat, they only ate enough to survive. Gretel threw away the food on her plate when the witch was not looking, 
and Hansel hid the food in his jacket and trouser pockets. Gretel, come here, let's see if you've gotten any fatter. The witch first picked up Gretel to check her weight. You're such a skinny girl. You think that by staying like this you'll manage to free yourself from me? The witch pulled Hansel from his jacket. As she was checking him from outside the bars, the food in his jacket and trousers fell out. The witch immediately realised what was going on. You thought you could trick me, huh? I changed my mind. I'm not going to wait until you get fat. I'm going to cook you both in the oven today. Let this be your punishment. Ha 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 ha! She was so furious that she kept banging herself into things while she was strangling around the house. Because the witch was actually blind. It was then that Gretel realised that the witch couldn't see. She was by the stove both crying and also planning on how they can escape. Gretel, come here quick! Take a look at the big oven in the kitchen. Tell me, is there enough wood inside? The fire was burning hot, but Gretel tricked the witch. The fire's about to go out, my lady. And throw in more wood. Quick! That oven door is stuck. I can't open it. What a useless girl you are. Skinny and useless. Here, it's this simple. The witch then opened the oven door. The heat of the burning wood hit her face. What's going on? You said there was no fire. The witch stretched her hand out towards the oven to understand what was happening. Taking this opportunity, Gretel pushed the witch into the oven with all her might. When the old witch fell into the oven, she closed and locked the door. The witch's screams could be heard from all around. Ah! Ah! Help! Help! Gretel opened Hansel's cage and let him out. Both siblings hugged each other tightly. They were very happy. My dear sister, well done! We're now saved because of you! <laughs> Gretel, come on! Let's see if we can find something to use at home before we get out of here! They wandered around the house together. There was a door to a room that the witch never allowed to be opened. When they opened it, they saw a chest full of jewels. <laughs> Let's fill our pockets right away! We'll have jewels instead of food this time! They quickly got away from the house and entered the forest. It was as if all the paths were familiar. Finally, they saw the house from afar. Father! We're here! The father that opened the door happily hugged his children. He was so happy. Children, I have some news for you. Your stepmother got ill and passed away. I made a huge mistake by listening to her. Please forgive me. I've missed you so very much. I regret everything. We've missed you too, Father. We missed our home and beds too. Now we can forget about everything and be together. They took the jewels out of their pockets and gave them to their father. Their father stared with surprise. What are these? We're no longer poor, we're rich! Father, we have so much to tell you! You have no idea what we've been through! That night they sat by the fire and chatted till morning. The bad days were left behind. So, they all lived a happy and peaceful life. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, lived a miller who had three boys. Before the miller passed away, he divided his possessions among the boys. The older son inherited the mill, the middle son the donkey, and the youngest inherited his cat. Oh. <laughs> the small son was very upset at this. 
cat is no use to me. What can I do with him? Don't be upset. One day you'll understand why I've done this. He's a very clever cat. Not long after that, the miller passed away, and the three brothers received their father's inheritance. The younger son didn't even look at his cat. The cat got very upset when he saw his new master treated him with disdain. In no time you realize that you received the best inheritance. I will oh. prove it to you. Give me an empty sack, a hat, and a pair of boots. The youngest brother was very surprised when he heard the cat talk. Since he was incredibly curious, he honored the cat's odd request. The cat set to work right away. He put the hat Ooh. on his head and wore the boots. He stood in front of the mirror and admired himself. How wonderful this hat and these boots are. They go well with my long yellow fur and my amazing green eyes. I look just like royalty. He set to work immediately. He packed fresh lettuce and carrots in a sack and headed to the forest. When he got there, he opened the sack and hid behind a tree. After a short time, a hungry rabbit that was hopping by sniffed the food and went inside the sack. The cat immediately grabbed the sack and held it shut as he ran straight to the palace. There were guards at the entrance of the palace. They took him before the king. Puss in Boots bowed his head before the king. He then took the rabbit out of the sack. Your Majesty, I brought you a gift from Lord Carabas, with my respects. Oh, a rabbit. Thank you very much. You can let your master know that I accept his gift. Over time, Puss in Boots gave the king many different gifts on behalf of Lord Carabas. <laughs> the king was intrigued and requested to meet this lord, who had offered him so many gifts. One day, the king, queen and their princess daughter, accompanied by Puss in Boots, set out on the road towards the lord's castle. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Puss in Boots ran ahead of them and went to his master to give him some instructions. Our king is definitely going to pass by the river. Go to the river and pretend that you're drowning. Shout for help as we pass by. I'm gonna hide your clothes too. What are you planning? What use is all of this to us? Don't be afraid, just do what I say. The confused young boy went to the river as the cat instructed and waited for them to arrive. There were a lot of farmers on sides of the road that led to the Lord's castle. The king will pass by here shortly. If he asks who this farm and land belong to, say that they belong to Lord Carabas, understood? If you don't, the king will get very angry and punish you. Of course, sir, whatever you wish. Puss in Boots warned all the farmers he encountered on the road. After doing so, Puss in Boots finally arrived at the castle where a mean giant with magical powers lived. Puss in Boots knocked on his door. Who is that? Well, who dares to disturb me? I'm the servant of Lord Carabas. My lord and the king will soon arrive at your castle. I'd like to go in so I can rest a little if you don't mind. Will you let me inside? Okay. Come on in. Once inside, the cat started chatting with the giant. I've heard that you have magical powers, but I don't believe it. Apparently, you can turn into any animal. Is this true? Of course I can. Why wouldn't you believe it? For instance, can you turn into a lion? That's easy. Rawr. There you go, I'm a lion now. The ah. cat, scared out of his wits, jumped on top of a cupboard. Okay, okay, wonderful. That was easy. But can you turn into a mouse? Nothing to it. Ah. Whoop. The giant turned into a tiny mouse. Puss in Boots caught him immediately and placed him in a small box. He returned to the forest to set the mouse free and headed towards the king. Welcome, Puss in Boots. 
perfect timing. Let's head off. <laughs> Just as the king's horse-drawn carriage passed the river, they heard someone shouting. Help! Help! Help me! Soldiers, go help him! Someone's drowning in the river! The soldiers ran towards the young boy and fished him out of the water. The boy explained some thieves had stolen his clothes. The soldiers then got some fine clothes from the carriage and dressed him up. Your Majesty, may I present my master, Lord Carabas? I owe you my life, Your Majesty. Though the smallest brother didn't understand what was going on, he went along with Puss in Boots. Here's my beautiful wife, the Queen, and my beloved daughter, the Princess. Enchanted to meet you, Your Majesty. Come now, let's go to the castle. The youngest brother and the princess fell in love at first sight. The princess was a beautiful girl, and the youngest brother, who was pretending to be Lord Carabas, was very handsome. As they continued on the road, the king asked the farmers he came across, Oh, whose land is this? Lord Carabas, my king! Lord Carabas, my king! Lord Carabas, my king! Lord Carabas, my king! The king was very pleased with everything he saw. Young lord, it seems that you are very powerful and loved around here. Puss and Boots' plan worked out perfectly. When they arrived at the castle, they treated themselves to a wonderful feast. By evening, the youngest brother had become Lord Carabas and had asked the king for his daughter's hand in marriage. I would like my daughter to have a powerful, wealthy, clever and respectable husband like you. If my daughter accepts, you may have her hand in marriage. Not long after that, the princess and Lord Carabas got married. They lived happily ever after in their castle. Puss in Boots never left their side. Oh, Father, now I know what you meant. 